Hello and welcome to the interview with Dr. Samir Chakar. He's a well-known homeopath and joins our conversation from India. Dr. Samir, welcome. Thank you, Mary. Uh, please let me introduce you first. Okay. His subject of interest is behavioral disorders in children, especially autism and ADHD. He has specialized his practice in addictions, autoimmune diseases like vitiligo, psoriasis, uh, atopic dermatitis along with asthma, allergies, IBS, PCOS, hair disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, menstrual uh, irregularities, pediatric problems like nocturnal neurosis, failure to thrive, and as we mentioned before, behavioral disorders like ADHD, autism, etc. Dr. Samir, welcome again. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. We are also very happy too. And for the first question, what is homeopathy? And in short, please. See, basically homeopathy is a system of medicine and it is based on the law of similars. That means whatever causes the disease has also the power to cure the disease. So for example, in homeopathy, we have substances which are made from the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, the mineral kingdom. And these medicines are potentized or these substances are potentized and then they're proved on healthy human beings. That is one major difference between allopathy and homeopathy, that homeopathy is proved on healthy human beings. And after giving a particular substance to a healthy human being, he starts developing some symptoms. These symptoms are noted down. And when a patient of similar symptoms comes to us, we treat him with that same remedy that had caused the same symptoms in a healthy patient. Yeah, it's a bit complicated, but very clear for me. Yeah. But uh, okay. Usually, the thing is that like cures like. So poison is killed by a poison. That's uh -huh. what is the principle of homeopathy, uh -huh. and it is based on the law of nature. So it is not anything like when you see sun and the stars. Just to give you a common example, when the sun is there, uh, the stars are also there, but you can't see the stars. That doesn't mean that the stars are not there, but because of the intensity of the sun's light, you cannot see the stars. So that is basically the law of nature on which homeopathy is based on. Okay, okay thank you. And uh, the second question is, does homeopathy help autism and related disorders? But uh, first of all, let's define autism in short, please. Because um, we generally consider and imagine autism like the Rain Man stereotype of Dustin Hoffman, but um, there's a, actually a broad spectrum from mild to severe, such as ADHD, bipolar, uh, Asperger's syndrome, autism, paranoid state, and even schizophrenia, etc. But some of the doctors and scientists call autism only a difference, while others call it a disease with severe metabolic conditions, right? So what is your opinion and what would you like to say about this? Basically, autism means auto, which means a person goes into himself. He is not aware of the surroundings. So many a times when a child does not listen or hear to his mother's call, the mother or the parents, they feel that he is deaf. And the first test that they would go and do is a Behra's test, which is for deafness. But usually the child is not deaf. Here in autism, the problem is with social communication, intellectual communication, and there are stereotype motions. So it is a behavioral disorder, it is a learning disorder in a, in a way. But schizophrenia and bipolar are not ones which we can grade along with autism. Autism itself is a spectrum from mild to moderate to severe. So when you look at mild autism, there'll be minimum problems of communication, minimum problems of sociability, minimum hyperactivity will be there. And the child is quite intelligent. And that is what is Asperger's syndrome, okay, which has the least morbidity. So basically, I was saying that autism goes from an autism spectrum disorder. It is known as a spectrum disorder. It is not a single thing. So it goes from mild to moderate to severe. And mild means there is no mental retardation at all. In fact, the child could be very, very intelligent. And that is what we see in Asperger's syndrome, where the children are very, very intelligent. And they are known as autism savant children. 
while once you go from the spectrum from left hand side to the right hand side to the severe side you may have mental retardation developing the child may have problems with survival so there could be down syndrome associated also so that is the autism spectrum disorder thank you again and you know it's very difficult to manage autism Families are exhausted both mentally, physically, and even financially. So I never want to be hope mongering. So I'm asking sincerely, does homeopathy really make a difference in autism? See, when a patient or when a mother or a father or parents, they come with an autistic child, they come with a lot of hope because the other systems are not able to give them the things that they want. So basically, when an autistic child comes to us, his main problems are either hyperactivity or there is a lot of impulsivity. There is no speech. There is no eye-to-eye -eye contact. There is no understanding of what's going on around. The child is aloof, not mixing with people. And with homeopathy, we have seen that with the constitutional homeopathy treatment, over six months to eight months or even a year, the child is able to regain his speech regain his eye-to-eye -eye contact, is able to understand what his parents are talking to him. He follows the commands also and his impulsivity as well as the reactivity reduces and it comes back to normal. So homeopathy has an excellent role in autism according to my experience. Very nice to hear that. And what is needed for a successful treatment? For successful treatment, it is very, very important to educate the parents first, educate the, the people who bring the child to us because homeopathy itself needs proper understanding. So the first thing I do is tell the parent that please don't tell me the symptoms of autism because homeopathy does not treat the disease. Homeopathy treats the person. So when I ask the lady or I ask the man about his child, I tell him, tell me the symptoms of your child and not symptoms of autism. But since they are so much used to talking about autism, they will talk about all the symptoms of autism. But then I tell them, please stop and tell me the symptoms of the child. Like what are his fears? What are his anxieties? What are his hobbies? How is his relationship with his siblings? Uh, how is his relationship with other children? Is there some jealousy? Is there some destructiveness, aggressiveness? So these are the symptoms that we are interested in homeopathy. And if we get all these symptoms, we are sure to get positive results. And how much improvement will they see? As I have told you, autism is a spectrum disorder. That means it goes from left to right where mild is there, moderate is there, severe is there. With mild to moderate autism, we have seen 90 to 95% improvement in children within 6 to 8 months or 1 year. But with children who have got mental retardation and who are on the right side of the spectrum where there is severe uh, disability is seen in form of mental retardation, there we can only palliate and we can give some relief to the child so that at least he is able to take care of himself, he is able to go to a school where he can be taken care of. But as far as mild to moderate autism is concerned, we can surely give 95 to 99 percent. Um, does it show that a child or a person uh, has to stop other treatments or supplements before starting homeopathy? Uh, I usually don't stop any other treatments because the people uh, or the parents are so much used to those treatments, giving them for so many years that the parents may not like stopping the treatment. And as far as homeopathy is concerned, I feel if your medicine is right, whatever else you're giving, homeopathy will work. It will do its own work. It will go on its own path and give relief to the child. So whatever tonics, vitamins, whatever organics, the biologicals they give, I'm okay with it. I don't stop it. And what is recovery crisis or aggravation? Which one would you prefer? Uh, what do we um, what do we know if a symptom is a recovery crisis or aggravation? And how long, if any, does it last? Now, homeopathic medicines are available in different potencies, from low potencies to medium potencies to high potencies. So anytime we give a medium to high potency, there are chances of aggravation or recovery crisis. So I usually do something that I usually tell the patients that don't worry. I'll tell the parents that don't worry if the hyperactivity or other symptoms increase because once the medicine is stopped, the symptoms also come down back to normal. But in order to avoid 
this crisis, I always start with low potency so that such crisis can be averted and the patients or parents are not panicking. After giving the remedy, and how long does it take for the patient to react? And what should we expect? Again, it depends upon at what level the person is presenting to us. If he's in the mild to moderate spectrum, and if your remedy is right, within uh, a week or two weeks, he will start showing positive symptoms. First of all, his eye-to-eye -eye contact will start increasing. He will start looking when his name is called. He will also, his hyperactivity, his impulsivity will also reduce. His sleep will be better. His appetite will be better. He will start sitting in one place and eating. These are the common testimonials that the parents give us after the right constitution. And um, how are homeopathic remedies given? Homeopathic remedies are basically uh, given on uh, sugar pills. These are small round sugar globules on which the homeopathic medicines are, the drops are put. So children can take them because they are sweet, they are easily palatable and in fact children like to eat, take it. They are not bitter or they are not pungent like the allopathic medications and therefore all the children, most of the children like taking the pills. But if some children have problems of sensory integration as far as the pills are concerned, then we tell mothers to put drops in water or in food or whatever and then they can be taken to it. There's no problem. Do you prefer to use bath lovers as complementary or not? And do you think there's a need for additional supplements, vitamins, minerals, or drugs over the counter or not? Back flowers are very, very important, and I use them regularly in my practice. I have also done my back flower practitioner course. I'm a registered back flower practitioner from the back center in UK. And I have been using back uh, remedies along with homeopathy as excellent supplements and adjuvants. And back remedies have really helped me to take care of my autism children, ADHD children in a great scale. As far as vitamins and over-the-counter products are concerned, I feel uh, if the diet of the child is good, if he's eating properly, he doesn't really require any vitamins or minerals or whatever because the body takes what it wants. If the body doesn't take what it wants, any type of mineral or vitamin you give externally, it is not going to be absorbed. Homeopathy increases the absorption of the normal food that we eat. So if the patient is having normal food, if the child is having normal food and has a good appetite, I don't think any vitamins or minerals are required. And how many times should you see the patient face to face? And do you think distance examination is enough and the same with the face to face? See, in cases where we are not able to have a face-to-face -face, uh, consultation like we had during the times of COVID, uh, we did face-to-face -face consultations, but I usually, uh, we did online consultations, but usually I prefer face-to-face -face consultation because it's not only the child that we are talking to, we are talking to the whole family. We are looking at the chemistry between the parents and the child. We are looking at the chemistry between the two parents, what's going on, which is not visible online. So I usually prefer face-to-face -face, uh, consultations and therefore most of my patients who are in Istanbul, Turkey, I visit regularly every two months there. I see patients there. While the follow-ups I usually do online. So many follow-ups all over the world, wherever I do follow-ups, I do online. But when I take the first case, which is the most important thing, I usually do it face-to-face. -face. Uh, so you have patients from all over the world, right? Yeah. And I'm asking for the audience, how can they reach you? Uh, I have a website called uh, uh, homeopathichealthsolutions.com. They can reach me through that. They can reach me through my email, drsameerchopar at gmail.com. I also have a phone number uh, on WhatsApp. I can be contacted and uh, uh, people can uh, get in touch with me. I can send my case papers to them. They can fill up the case papers and then we could have a video interview also on WhatsApp or Zoom. Mm -hmm. And um, these were my questions. Is there anything else that you want to highlight? Yes, I think uh, it's very, very important to recognize autism and catch it as early as possible. That's what we say, catch them early and catch them young. If a child is brought to a homeopath as early as two years, three years, when it is diagnosed, Parents should not really waste time going to, to this doctor, that doctor and giving minerals and supplements and experimenting on their child, but they should go to a homeopath. Homeopathy 
offers a very very positive result in autism it's not only me but there are so many good homeopaths all over the world please give homeopathy to your child and your child will come out of this and it's not only autism it's autism adhd bipolar schizophrenia it could be oppositional defiant disorders it could be anything related to children homeopathy works excellent and since children have good susceptibility and good immunity homeopathy gives very very fast results so please don't waste time reach a homeopath as soon as possible if possible you could reach me and wherever you are placed i could also give you the number or address of a homeopath in your area you could go and visit them but please give homeopathy to your children thank you very much thank you for your contribution and your precious time let's keep in touch thank you thank you thanks a lot for calling thank you very much thank you